Tonight on Let's Talk Fish Live, me and Matt's five favorite fall fishing lures. studio two weeks in a row hopefully our feed's gonna work tonight yeah we apologize uh hopefully i might have jinxed don't it. give me I that look. Jinxed it. i reburied <laughs> cable all week <laughs> yeah, brand new cable. blame it on spectrum I, I, don't, I hand dug a mile of trench <laughs> yeah. yeah i know better than that you, you and manual labor that ain't happening all right so this could potentially be our last episode in this, this studio maybe possibly potentially i'm gonna maybe. say it's not because jeff's need, got too much going on y'all need to text get emily and allison to text leslie and say don't ask jeff to do anything else and then i'll have time to do it this week <laughs> wait do what the, 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 oh yeah, we I'm need to confused. get her, <laughs> i'm confused too anyway, all right we're what, talking about fishing that's right what Jeff's <laughs> talking about What's up, everybody? Wes, Larry, Marvin, Ryan. What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in. Logan Taylor. Logan got his prize pack last week. Good deal. Um, sure did. Oh, Logan called me out on the walking bait. That's okay. Um, all right. <laughs> what walking bait? Yeah. You tell us. Oh, exactly. What walking you, bait? I don't know what to talk about. Yeah. Get right. on it. Get back, on it. Back to the show. Took it out of the giveaway. Back to the show. That was dirty. Um, dirty. I never volunteered it for the giveaway. I volunteered it My for you. cohort over here did. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, you can't give a man a $5 bait. <laughs> What's up, mate? <laughs> I mean, I bought you ten dollars worth of chips tonight. Ten dollars. Yeah. How much is a bag of chips? At least. It was ten dollars for all of them. <laughs> you need to find another place to buy I'm chips. Just <laughs> all right. I do appreciate the chips. Uh, what the heck's our topic? What's our topic? Me and Matt. Me and Matt. Me and Matt. Me and Matt. Exactly. Me and Brian's. Brian and I's. Top five. We I each. Matt. We each brought our top five. <laughs> favorite fall fishing baits. We actually had a couple questions on last week's show about what are your favorite baits in the fall. We got to talk about fall fishing a little bit, but we really didn't dive into it too hard. We talked, what did we talk about more last week? We talked about line last yeah, week. Yeah, we talked about the different types of lines and y'all told us the name of the knots we use, which was very, very thankful. We learn something, we learn something every week. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> and we are, let's see, what, we got our FLW giveaway tonight. It is an FLW related question, but we wanted to talk. I don't even know what the question is. Did you come up with a question? I got a question. Right, we when got you a were question. outside, I got a question. Right. I got it handled. Um, it's it's not, I, I could have stumped y'all. I just want everybody to know I could have stumped y'all. But um, what is what's this? that for? Give it away. We're supposed to do announce this before the show. No, no, we'll, we'll break this in. Nobody saw it. We'll break that in at the new studio. How about that? Whatever. So, whatever. It, at the new studio, when we launch our new location, we'll have, uh, dude, what is running down in your, look at that. What oh is God. in his, oh my God. Dude, what you got like, I don't know. It looks like That's ice, dude. There ain't no way. That's that some kind ice. of. You got the funk in your drink, That's man. Ice. What? I don't know what that was. Oh, it didn't look like me. ice. Um, it didn't look. All right, so top five fall fishing baits. Oh, what I was getting ready to touch on was the Ron Lappin deal. Yeah. Okay. You said you were fixing to touch. <laughs> I'll touch on it. I got it. All right. I, I, FLW Go ahead. announced Sorry. this week the Costa Series schedule for 2019. They also announced that Ron Lappin was retiring. And if any of you know him fishing in the Costa Series, you know how great of a tournament director he was, one of the best out there. And I just want to tell him thank you and wish him good luck with the rest of his endeavors. And we're going to miss him. Ron was a cool dude. Ron was awesome. And he, he you know what's so cool about Ron? And, and a lot of FLW tournament directors are the same way. Is they're, like, I can remember faces, but Ron would remember every single competitor's name, last name, their wife's name, their kid's name. 
and and he he got to know every angler on such yeah. a personal level, and he made you feel like family. And all the FLW organization always makes us feel yeah. like family. Uh, that's one of the many reasons why we fish FLW. But all right, so fall is, fishing is Mr. Wilson going with us, Mike? Absolutely. He of wherever we go, Mr. Wilson's going. We actually were talking about how to transport Mr. Wilson. If anybody's ever transported a pet bass, I to think a you should location, bring your boat over here. We'll put him in the live well. My boat might not even be here. But and we'll haul him to this house. That would probably be the safest thing to do. Exactly. Um, you got the oxygenator in there. Keep him why don't you bring your boat over here? Because I volunteered your boat. <laughs> <laughs> My boat might not be available. Um, pretty simple. I did see, oh, Ryan Love, who is one of our regular viewers. Ryan's always on the show. He did ask me the other day. I'm glad you shot me a reminder, Ryan, about announcing a... a Fish to Carolina's Crappy Tournament. I know this is a bass fishing show, but they are starting a, a new crappy trail on some pretty good lakes. The uh, first one, I guess, is on, on High Rock Lake. He said September 8th, and uh, he said you could check out the tournament trail information. A lot of big name lakes, and uh, fish to Carolinas.org is that website link for uh, the Carolina's Crappy Tournament Trail. So that all uh, that's that's pretty neat because there's a lot, there's tons of crappy fishermen around. Yeah, and it's crappy. Everybody that. It's from the Carolinas is going to it's say crappy. crappy. It, it's, it's definitely crappy. crappy. Um, we're not going to argue with anybody about that. It's, there's no crappie. It's, it's all crappy down here. Um, yeah, Buddy yeah. Black, that's right. Notice Thrift said your boat, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> it's always my boat. Um, Lenny has just commented one of Ron's famous quotes, Ron Lappin's famous quote, Settle down, girls. It's just a game. That's I right. remember Talking him the saying fish. that all Talking the time the when he puts the fish in the weigh-in basket and they start flopping around. Yep, that's <laughs> right. That's right. All right, awesome. so thank you. <laughs> you want to start with yours, or do you want to bounce yeah, back and forth? Let's kind of dive into our idea of fall fishing and when it starts. Okay, well, we, we were arguing about that. We, we weren't arguing about that before the show. What's up? That's true, Luke. I guess the drift doesn't usually have bass that small in his live We'll feel right riding home in Matt's boat. Kind of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. What? what thank just you. keep eating your chips, man. Just be quiet. I'm done for going like you, you don't You don't even know what a bass looks like until we brought that one over here, so. That's a bass. You don't, yeah, that's a bass, believe it or not. It's not a redfish. All right, uh, uh, fall fishing. Let's go with it. Yeah, so when, when, when does fall fishing actually start? Y'all give us your opinion on when you think fall fishing actually begins so to speak so we said well we won't tell you what we said if you were if you're if you're part of the facebook group then you'd know that's true well they must be having a lot of music outside i got a band right out the door dude oh really yeah huh. invite them in yeah. <laughs> is it a mariachi band? band we need a mariachi band with, one guy with our chips they got beer and barbecue and all we all could just stuff. take a camera out there for everybody to see the party going on why don't you right do a lap around downtown live <laughs> while we're in the studio <laughs> i just right. billy got a bass was here <laughs> <laughs> we went live all the way to pleasant city that is true that is true he did that he did that with the group um all right, oh, Jared Bright said it's 105 in Texas. What y'all talking about, Paul? <laughs> uh, Bruce Camp said the first frost. I'm going to agree to disagree with that, Bruce. I disagree with Bruce. Yeah, because from a fishing <laughs> standpoint, things start happening way before the first frost ever occurs. Way before. Um, let's see. Well, let's get into it. All right, well, my, my take. Me, go ahead. No, go ahead. You start. To me, the fall fishing starts when you get your first couple of days where you have lower morning and night temperatures, like when... When you start having temperatures in the low to low to mid 60s and the like water temp week? first starts falling, yep, like last week, to me that kicks off fall fishing. The, the water temps don't fall much, but it falls just enough and the days are getting shorter and the bait fish starts moving. To me, that is the kickoff for fall fishing. I see a lot of really good responses. <laughs> Brian Clary has a See, specific, Ryan Shari specific. Said the same thing. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan pretty much mimicked <laughs> what Thrift just said. Brian Clary said when the water is 62. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Brian. You said around 62. And, you know, what a lot of people, what Brian just touched on, that a lot of people don't realize that things start happening when those first little changes occur. And that might be a temperature drop from 90 degrees to 87 degrees. Yeah. It might be from 87 to 85 degrees. Now, that might degrees. not be your dead middle of your fall feed your major but, but it's getting started yep things will start changing um a lot sooner than that and it, and it depends on where you are in the country too so 
you know, some water temps in, in certain lakes, especially up north and things like that, they don't ever even touch 90 degrees. You yeah, know, their, so. their fall fishing started about three weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of guys like second week September. Uh, Ken, Kenny said third week of September. And, you know, we it's always September for us. There's not yeah. an exact date we can put on it. But usually it's the first or second week of September things start changing. Yeah. Um, now, we did have, was it last week? We had like three days. Yeah, we had three days where the lows were in upper the low 50s. 60s, upper 50s. 59, 58. Yeah. Like you'd step out on the porch at daylight and it'd be kind of cool. Yep. Um, I'm seeing several answers when the days get shorter and the, the bait starts to move and things like that. Yeah, that, that's all 100%. Uh, Appreciate that vote of confidence, Jared. 100% <laughs> accurate. Um, time change. So the time, when does the time change back? Buddy Black said time changes. That's in October, isn't it? Yeah, that's. Around yeah, the October. last week of October. Yeah, so th things will definitely start transitioning um, before that time change. But that you know, by that time, things are really rocking and rolling, and and then you see on up until uh, you know all the way through Thanksgiving and things like that. Shoot, last year, I remember last year on Lake Norman, we did one of those LTF. Ch it was it might have been the first LTF challenge that we did when you and I fished. Yeah, was it Breeze? No, not that one. Oof. <laughs> Not that one. That was, that was the oh, second one we uh, did. Well, you and I were catching them in December in a foot of water. Was that when we did the one with me and Wheeler and you and Shane? Well, it was, no, I was with Shane, but I don't know who you it were. It wasn't with. December. I was with Jacob. Me we, and Wheeler and you and Shane beat me and Jacob. And then the next one, me and you beat Shane and Brandon Cobb. That was later, though. Yeah. Um, that was when it was cold. But yeah, it was like 20 point being is it's yeah. all weather-based. And last year, there was a lot of fish still in the fall still in a fall position on up into December. Um, it seems to me every year, and you know, the hippies might start screaming global warming or something like that, but it seems to me everything seems to be pushed a little bit further ahead every year. It's like the spawns can be a touch earlier and the fall transition can be can be more spread out. It's like, it's it's just like things change every year to year. And it depends on where you are in the country on how everything starts to uh, start. And to every year is different too. I mean, some years you, yeah, hotter years, some years are cooler. Yep. Um, yeah, that's uh, Jared Bright said, well said, Brian. Even if you're not right, that's you what spoke with a ton of confidence. Exactly. That's right. That's, that's what, what it takes. About. That's, that's what, what it takes to, to be a good salesman. <laughs> even if you're not accurate or you don't know your product as well as you think you know your product, if you convince the buyer that you do, hey, and you're confident in the sale, it still may happen. So there you go. Exactly. <laughs> good point, Jared. Um, well, how long does this buy last? When does it end? When does the fall bite go into winter? I, I can't put a date on that. I mean, I can put a rough estimate. You know, I, I, it's, I, it's sometime in December for us. Yeah. In my opinion. Sometime. Typically, sometime Early December. December, late December. I yeah. So, so, see, you said early to late December. So, I mean, it can Yeah, it depends be, on temperature. Now, some years on Lake Norman, I'm still catching them on top water like Christmas Day. See? That's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's weird. Yep. Let's see. Um, <laughs> David, you're one to talk. He said, wish the tour would fish in the fall. He said, Matt's scared to come out of a tree for a few days. David acts like he ain't a hardcore deer hunter. I know how much. David's sending me pictures all during yeah. deer season. Like, I seen a video of an elk view one he's put on Instagram. Yeah, That's he's stuff. yeah he's like riding around looking at elk and stuff. So. <laughs> all right, um, Jerry, we're going to talk about the fall transition a little bit. Let's dive into our top five baits. So you want to bounce back and forth? You do one, I do one. What was yeah. cool is we showed up tonight, and, I, and, and we didn't talk before the show about <laughs> who's bringing what. And we pretty much have – they're similar, but yeah. – but Very similar. Different baits, and, and overall, I actually have a couple completely different baits than what Brian has, but overall, it's 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 somewhat similar. So, Brian, you pick one and you start. These, right. are, these are our top five I'm going to pick each. two. Okay, you're going to pick two. Because I've got two that essentially, I mean, they don't do, they kind of do the same thing. My first pick. Catching the same fish. Yeah, they're catching the same fish. The first two baits I'm going to show you is top our top water baits. Um, anytime in the fall, I'm going to start. Every time I put my boat in the water, I'm going to start out with top water until about the first week of December here in North Carolina. And I've got two baits that I'm going to have definitely on my deck. One is a whopper plopper, and one is a walking bait, a Demiki Rambler. And both of these are kind of shad patterns. I got a, I think this is called powder or something for the whopper plopper. And the Demiki Rambler is called hollow black. It's real shiny, got a lot of flash, just like a baked fish would. And to me, these are really the only two top water baits you need in the fall. I want something I can <clears throat> wind fast and cover a ton of water with, which is where the whopper plopper comes into effect. And then I want something that I can fish over long points, catch suspending fish, 
That's where the Dominky Rambler comes in. It's got the loud one knocker in it. Here, it rattles. So that's my two top water baits. You like that? It just wouldn't have been the same without that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have the noise. I wish I could make a good plopper noise. <laughs> Does that sound about right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, those are my first two choices for top water. Go David, ahead, Matt. David Williams has got a good point. He said when you see 500 people slinging Alabama rigs around here, the fall fishing is now officially over. That is correct. That could be very accurate, especially you get down around Wiley and things like that. Or on Instagram Live. What? <clears throat> oh, is that, is that what you're doing your Instagram yeah. Live? <laughs> we go live on Instagram a little bit. Maybe right. a question or two pop up. You know very cool, know. very cool. <laughs> All right, so we're up to 150 viewers, guys. It's awesome. Um, I almost, 154. I, uh, 154, Instagram. I'm sorry. Oh, we have 154 on Instagram? Uh, David Scruggs four. asked. Oh, we have four on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> David Scruggs asked what size plopper, I'm assuming. This is the 130. I like it best because it's bigger and it, I can throw it farther. <laughs> it catches bigger bass. <laughs> it catches bigger bass. I can put bigger hooks on it. That, like, pretty much that's it. I got to agree to disagree, and I like that bait the best until that 75 came out. And the reason I like that 75 so much is because the hooks are so close to get on that bait, a fish cannot strike it without getting hooked in his back. <laughs> and I do, because you will miss fish on that big plopper occasionally, but Brian does have some gargantuan hooks, like shark hooks hanging off that yeah. thing. But hey, I'm all about any top water, as long as you're not affecting the action, go with the biggest hook you can get away with and the sharpest yeah. hooks you can get away with. I put the biggest hook on everything. Uh, uh, yeah. Quick question, real quick. Just yeah. Better from uh, what about in a blueback herring lake? What would you go to bait? Uh, you know that's that that can get a little tricky. But go ahead. Bro. I'd probably go with the walking bait. Not the same baits. I mean, I'd really use the same baits. I might lean more toward the walking topwater bait on a blueback lake, but I'm still going to use the same five baits I've brought tonight. And keep in mind that on a blueback lake, there's still a lot a resident shallow population of fish that are not targeting those bluebacks. They're targeting crawfish and bluegill and bread yeah. and things like that. So, um, and the lowly thread fin. The yeah. forgotten thread and fin. And the forgotten thread fin, Brian <laughs> said. Um, all right, so since Brian touched on topwaters, I'm gonna go with another topwater, which this is just the Lumpner Hunt Link. It's a little bit different style walking bait, but I do use, it's actually a hinged walking bait. This is the larger version. And this is in there again, uh, Brian touched on the shad patterns. This is actually the thread fin shad pattern. You can see it there. It's a uh, it's very a very very realistic and lifelike pattern. They use a, a print uh, actually a a print um, a paint print process where they actually print the uh, the actual design from the fish and then they wrap it on the bait itself. So a uh, pretty neat deal there. And this is a little bit different action, but I use a lot of different style walking baits. And we picked five baits, so I wanted to be kind of diverse in my selection. Um, but we, I mean, I use spooks, I use all kinds of, everybody asked what the bait was, I was calling it a cup, it was a six cents. Um, yeah. We use a lot of different style walking baits, sometimes we want something with a hard knot. These yeah. are a little bit more subtle, they're a little bit more realistic, and they, um, any of these baits can be worked fairly fast, but if I am going to cover water with a top water, I'll also have either a plopper or a buzz bait or something like that on the deck. Sometimes, and Brian's the same way, we might have four or five top waters yeah. on the deck. Yeah, pretty the much, if I think I can get a top water bite, I'm going to have at least three or four different top waters on the deck. Yeah, that's uh, um, all right. Uh, John Skipper said braid or mono for top water. John, I'm going to challenge you to do something. Go and watch last week's episode. We did a complete episode on line selection, what we use for top water fishing, all kinds of stuff. We use both to answer your question, but if you'll go back and watch that episode, we get a lot more in depth on yeah. why we use certain lines. For a flopper, I use braid. I use 40 pound TCBX braid for walking baits. I use a uh, Usually a 15 or 20 pound mono for a quick answer. Tim Bradford just joined on Instagram. We'll get that hat right out to you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, Tim? <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, you want to go to, do I need to do two since you did two? Yeah, you start the next one. All right, so this is a bait that a lot of people overlook in the fall. Uh, guys get keyed in on this bait around the shad spawn and things like that. It's a big deal around here. And but pre-spawn. And pre-spawn too. Yeah. But I have caught a ton of fish on a white swim jig or a shad pattern swim jig in the fall, um, those fish get keyed in on bait, whether they're in the, especially when you get a little stained water in the back of a creek or up in a river, things like that. Fish will set up on lay downs or in current breaks, yeah. eddies, whatever. And a white swim jig is something that a lot of people do not throw in the fall. They just don't think about it and it catches a ton of bass. Um, I brought it because it's something that, like I said, I think it, I think it kind of gets thrown to the wayside after the shad spawns over and people forget about it, but it is a go-to in the fall and I've caught a lot of fish on it and that's it. It's, this is the Lunker Hunt swim jig. Um, very lifelike. It's actually got a wire tied skirt. It's got a really good hook in it. 
Uh, this is a 3 8 ounce and this is a shiner color, so it's kind of a natural shad pattern. Y'all can see it there. And trailers, I'll use, mostly I'll use shad type trailers. I might put a... a yeah, like a small swim bait. Yeah, some kind of small like swim that. bait. Something that, uh, um, and the cool thing, well, we make actually a swim bento that actually has mylar fabric in the middle of it. Uh, made by Lunker Hunt, so when you slide it up on the swim jig, it won't, it's just got a little tail that kicks, just like a live shad or a minnow or something. And when you slide it through that mylar, you slide it up on your swim jig, it won't come off. You don't have to glue it and things like that because you go through that fabric. Um, I've used cool. little dippers. I've used, uh, you know, all kinds of yeah, like, little contacts. Yeah, kind of, whatever your favorite little swim bait style body with a little boot tail, something that's going to kick. And yep. little that's boot the tail. biggest thing. You want something with a little bit of action, a little bit of roll to it. So. All right, There's so. a lot of different ones out there. Now we'll go one, one, and one. All right, one, one, and one. Next bait. My next bait too much math. is the old faithful chatter bait. <laughs> Got to have a chatter bait in the fall. And as you can probably tell by now, pretty much all of our selections are kind of shad themed baits, something that's going to imitate a shad. And to me, that's what fall fishing is all about, finding bait, imitating shad. So I'm definitely going to have this chatter bait tied on. This is a half ounce Z-Man Project Z. and. It's pretty self-explanatory. Everybody knows what a chatterbait is. I can fish it from five inches deep to 30 feet deep and fish whatever depth I want. I can keep it in 10 feet of water, catch suspended fish, catch fish on the bottom. I can skip it under the dock. There's pretty much nothing you can't do with this bait. So anytime you're in a situation in the fall or shatter running up creeks, I'm gonna have this bait. And I'm gonna kind of be similar with Matt on the swim jig. I'm gonna have some type of little swim bait body on it or some type of fluke style body like a Domeki armor shad or something like that just depending on the action I want and how kind of how dirty the water is if the water's dirtier I'll use a bigger profile trailer like a big boot tail swim bait something like that if the water's a little clearer I'll go with more of a fluke style body like the armor shad so and I usually always throw a half ounce too and the biggest thing for that is I want to be able to wind this bait fast so to me, in the fall, fish are up, they're feeding, you're covering a lot of water, so I want to be able to make long casts, throw this thing on 20 pound fluorocarbon, and wind it as fast as I can, keep it a foot to two feet in the water, and if you throw a lighter, like say a three eighths or a quarter, it's going to want to come up to the surface and you can't wind it quite as fast, so that's the reason I go with the old half ounce. Alright, so that's, <laughs> that's a great fall bait, um, especially because what Brian said is the uh, the versatility of that bait, how, the, how many how many depths you can fish it, how many speeds you can fish it. And my next bait, I'm going to talk about kind of the, it's got a similar application. You know, this is great. We didn't talk about before the show what we were going to bring, but we're really bouncing off of each other well tonight because of our bait selection. So this is good. It's almost like we planned it. It's almost like we planned, planned it. Planned it. <laughs> well, Marvin Gardner had a good question. This is a great question, Marvin. He said, during early fall, he said, do you throw more large or smaller topwaters? And that's a great question because a lot of times I've caught a lot of fish in the fall on a small eight ounce buzz bait and a small, smaller version walking baits, like basically little walking baits that are the size of the back half of that length there. Um, sorry, you can see it there. But three and four inch walking baits as opposed to some of the bigger six and seven inch walking baits. And that's a good question. Who because, makes a seven inch walking bait? What? Huh? Other than Lunker Punk. Lunker Punker. They make like a 12 inch walking bait. <laughs> who, makes, who makes a seven inch walking bait? Well, I don't know the exact way. measurements of them. He's always out. I got to call you out on that. I mean, I'm sorry. I know you made me laugh. I'm trying to answer <laughs> Marvin's question. Jeez. Next. Right. The reason the reason you do catch a lot of fish early fall on smaller topwaters is because a lot of times they're dialed in a really small bait. So yeah. if you're if you're struggling to get bit and you know the fish on that particular body of water are feeding on smaller thread fin, little brim, whatever it is. Um, downsize your top waters, go to a smaller walking bait, or even try that little eighth ounce buzz bait. I'm telling you, you'll get a lot of bites on it. And the, and the plopper, plopper makes a little plopper 90. Um, it's the 90 is the smallest one, right? I get my numbers yeah. mixed up. No, yeah. the 75 is the smallest now. It's actually fatter. Well, the, I tell you what though, the 75 has a little bit more of aggressive chop than the 90 does. Yeah, it's got so, a bigger tail fatter yeah, body. Yep, yeah. so it's a, it, the 90 is, is more the finesse plopper. So yeah, try downsizing your top waters early fall if you're not getting yeah. a lot of But there's two of trains of thoughts on that because I like bigger top waters in the fall. And well, I'm gonna try I to do explain, too if you can get bigger. I'm gonna explain my thought process on this, especially on herring lakes. Because if you think about in the fall, most of your shad start migrating to the back of the creeks. <clears throat> these are your smaller shad they'll get to start schooling and that's where you want to throw the smaller topwaters is when you get 
kind of back in creeks off the main river. But I feel like that bigger bait stays out on the main lake. It stays out on the wide, widest section of the lake. And that's where I throw bigger topwater. So if I'm running a main lake stretch of bait, I'm gonna be throwing big baits. And if I get work my way back in a creek, I'm usually gonna downsize and start throwing smaller baits. Or if you're at Lake Wachita, every fish <clears throat> in the lake. So, oh, Scott said it best. Do you hear what Scott said on the show? Scott said, you know, if you're a if you're a normal size shad in this lake, you could just run around, yeah, you play on the playground all day. I mean, you're safe. <clears throat> like you don't have to worry about anything eating you. And that's the truth because I think every bass in the lake at Wachita, other than the few that might eat a bluegill every once in a while, yeah. eat they prefer shad that are that long. <clears throat> And I don't know. Maybe well, there's only like, a handful of bass that could eat a shad bigger than that. Well, that's true too. Maybe they're maybe they're like deer when they're young, they're more <laughs> tender in that lake or something. Um, all right. So hope that answered your question, Marvin. Uh, <clears throat> you did the chatterbait. I'm going to do a spinnerbait because nowhere in the fall do I go that I don't have a spinnerbait tied on. And this is a half ounce double wheel leaf War Eagle. Um, I use a lot of different brands, but I do really like the War Eagle brand. No, they're not a sponsor of mine, but they make a darn good spinnerbait. They do make a good spinnerbait. Um, and everybody, I think every pro on tour would agree with that. Yes, and um, I'm sure there's not a pro on tour that doesn't have a War Eagle in their tackle box. Somewhere. Right, right. And there again, this is a shad pattern. I'm not even sure what the name of that skirt is, but it's one of my favorites in the fall. And I usually start with a double wheel leaf. Sometimes I go to like a three blade spinnerbait. Um, there's some guys around here that make some really good homemade ones, hand tied yeah. skirts. I now you're getting into David Williams secrets, three blade, four blade, three, three blade. Well, that used to be so yeah, I ain't secret <laughs> no more. Uh, but blue glimmer, you know, this has got a little purple tint to it. Um, stay with the natural shad patterns. I like them because, like Brian said, with the chatterbait, you can fish that bait from a foot to thirty foot, yep. and uh, you, you know you can vary retrieves and your cadence just like your jerk bait fishing or topwater fishing, and, and figure out it's going to be different every day, but figure out. Um, you know, there's there's spinnerbait days, so to speak, too, based on yeah. weather and conditions where you're going to crush them one day and not get a sniff yeah. on them. If it's cloudy and windy in the fall, that spinnerbait and chatterbait is going to be hard to beat, just throwing it and winding it as fast as you can. For sure. Um, all right. Next, Brian. What we got next, next for me is a bait I talked about at our cup wrap up the Demiki Backdrop Spoon. I had to bring it back because. I almost brought a spoon, I'm glad I didn't <laughs> Because I can't go fishing in the fall without this little spoon. I can throw it a mile if I see schoolers, I can vertical fish it, I can chuck it over brush piles. Actually, but the last two weeks, me and my buddy David Hendricks have been fishing the Thursday nighters out here at Moss Lake, and we've caught two of the three fish we've weighed in both nights on this little Demiki spoon. So it's already working. Hey, and tell them what's cool about that spoon. You said you can throw it in school and fish, but Tell them about your retrieve because oh, yeah. everybody gets dialed into a spoon thinking it's a vertical. Yeah, it's thinking it's they a cast vertical. it out and they're hopping it and doing things like that. But go ahead. I fish this spoon a lot like a swim bait. I cast it and just I wind it. Like as soon as it hits the water, I'll pop my rod to get it going and I'll just straight retrieve with my rod held up at like a 10 o'clock position. I throw it on 12 pound tactical fluorocarbon. And what's cool about this spoon is I don't know if you can see the back of it. It's got a a keel design just like the bow of your boat so when it's coming through the water when you're winding it it swims back and forth it's like kind of like a crankbait i mean it's just back and forth swimming those hooks have a little bit of mylar tied to them they got a lot of flash look good look he's trying to eat it already <laughs> <laughs> but that is a bait i absolutely cannot go to the lake without this time of year probably from now till they start really staging up for pre-spawn I and mean, I'll have this bait tied on all the way through the winter. So. Yeah, a spoon, a spoon, there again, another versatile bait that you can catch them on all the way through the winter. Jeff Davis, <clears throat> Jeff asks, how does he see Jeff's close-up of the baits? Well, Jeff is actually on Instagram Live, so if you follow us on Instagram. Oh, they want to see, Brian can they, wants can to see they get on? Can they get on? You could, you could stand up and show them the bait. Yeah, the Brian has to move a little closer with the spoon. Which camera are we going to, Jim? Go to Going to this one. I'll right. tell you if you're right or wrong in a minute. <laughs> Alright. Back so, drop spoon. Look at that. You can see the Hey, that's a good background on the wall. Of. That's it. Alright, uh oh Ernie Wallace, and the name congratulations. Of this is uh, Hollow Real Shad. If you Hollow Real Shad. Hollow Real Shad. Ernie said he got second place on a uh, white spinner bait this past uh, this past Saturday in a tournament down there at Coast. So um, Folly Grove Invitational Tournament Tour. Is that a bass tournament or a redfish tournament? Because redfish bite spinner baits too, you know, and chatterbaits. Yeah. Uh, and Ernie's a, Ernie's a heck of a redfishman, so. 
Um, all right. Next base. What's next for you? Next for me. All right, so we're kind of kind of get away from the shad stuff for a minute. We pretty much covered all that. Um, and I saw a question Alan Roberts asked. He wanted to know a good shaky head for fishing vertically. <clears throat> this is something that I do a lot in the fall. I do fish a shaky head vertically. Um, I drop down on fish with a shaky head. I don't know why, but it seems... Because they bite it. It's, well, because they bite it, like Brian said. It's to keep it simple, right? <laughs> Duh, because they bite it. All right, so a lunker stick, it's a 12-month out-of-the-year bait, and the, the next bait Brian's going to talk to... Um, very similar, but you fish it. I don't have mine rigged up a certain way because I do fish it a lot of different ways. But I will use some type of stand-up jig head, and I will fish this bait vertically in the fall for fish that are relating to shad that I can't get to bite. It's like Brian talking about throwing bigger topwaters and things like that when most of the other fish are eating small shad. You know, think outside the box sometimes. I've caught a lot of schooling fish on the bottom on soft plastics. <clears throat> including yep. a soft stick bait on a jig head. Look, there's always, if there's fish schooling in the area, there's always fish roaming around, kind of sitting and relaxing that you can pick off one here or there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> fish will uh, will still be eating brim and bluegill in the fall. There's still a lot of fish that are keying in on that. The majority of them will be on shad uh, and or herring. But this stick bait right here, rigged on jig head, and I'll fish it. I'll, I'll go out to Norman and I'll fish it as deep oh, as yeah. 25, 30, 35 feet, and I'll vertical fish it. And you'd be surprised how many of those fish out there that see a drop shot. And this goes true. This holds true in those herring lakes too, uh, guys and gals. When you drop down on those fish with a drop shot, how many of you have you? How, how many of you guys have seen a fish follow your drop shot down like on like on Lake Lanier, oh, yeah. and follow it down and sit there and they look at it and then they swim off and you're like what the heck you know he's interested in it <laughs> well switch it up put this thing <clears> on the, something different to look give at give him something different to look at and put it on the bottom and watch watch what happens so now it's not one it's not it's not a cure all but a lot of times you will catch a lot of those fish on something just a little bit different than a drop shot so try fishing uh, this is a lump <coughs> stick in the uh, in the watermelon red color try fishing something like that on a jig head. Uh, I fish it on usually a quarter ounce. Uh, I'll have it on 10 pound braid with an eight pound fluorocarbon leader on a, on a spinning rod. So uh, that's how I like to fish it. Uh, and, and you can still cast it around and things like that, but um, that's just something different that I do. And then that's fishing it vertically on the bottom for, for fish, uh, get, you know, uh, what do they call it? Computer game fishing, you know, fishing yeah, video, off the ground. Off the video game right. fishing. Thank video you. game. Uh, all right, I got. We got one enough. more bait left to piece. So Ryan, you're up next. I'm up next. All right, my fifth bait that I'm not going to go fishing without in the fall. My trusty Demicky Stinger on a shaky head. I don't go anywhere twelve months out of the year without this bait. But in the fall, true story, it seems to work exceptionally well because sometimes it can be tougher, especially in early fall kind of during that transition period from summer to fall when the bite is notoriously tough, it's hard to get bit. This thing gets me bites pretty much anywhere if I take the time to try to figure it out and find me. If I find fish, can't get them to bite anything, this is my confidence bait. And uh, I think I mentioned earlier on the little story or whatever we did, what was that called, Jeff? <laughs> when we went live in our oh, we went live before. closed private secret Facebook group. Yeah, the secret <laughs> Facebook group. We went live and uh, that anybody can join. Yeah, that yeah, anybody that can one. join. <laughs> Jody Wright was on there and uh, he's with Catcher Lures. He actually makes this shaky head. This is a I think this is actually a three sixteenths. But the reason I like this shaky head is I I like a big hook. Like we talked about earlier, I want to put the biggest hook I can in every bait I'm using. So. I got a big shaky head with a big five alt hook. Got a big barb on it. See, that's my whole deal is everybody makes these super sharp hooks, but a lot of companies don't put big barbs on them. He's using a good hook with a big barb, and uh, that's just what I like with it. So, that's a good point, big barb. Yeah, um, I, I want a big barb because when I get a fish stuck, I know he's not coming off. I can flip the bail, push the button in, let him swim, do whatever he wants, and then I can wind him in whenever I feel like it. Uh, David Mundy said, yeah, David, you're right, the Mickey rig, obviously it, it works very good in the fall and yes. through the winter. Um, that is uh, that is definitely something that kind of, well, it really came out came out of the closet during the uh, Cherokee BASS event. Yes. And you'll probably see it uh, a little bit more next year. There's some really early season events for, for several tours that I think you'll see that thing start shining a little bit more and more. Um, Anytime you've got suspended fish, though, or fish that are kind of lethargic, not wanting to bite that little Demicky rig's pretty good. Yep. Um, let's see, Brian Claxton, he said what's the best knot for tying 
uh, a leader in <laughs> Brad Wine. We know the name. We of know the now. name of it now. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. Uh, we we showed that uh, Brian. We showed that knot. Brian actually tied it on camera during last week's show. So go back and check out last week's show if you want to see that knot actually tied. But it is the Alberto knot. We didn't know that. We didn't even know the name of the knot that we used. No, we that is not. the name of it. It's the Alberto knot. Everybody so, says the FG knot's really good, but I've yet to find a man that could tie it. So. Yeah. <laughs> We're going with the Alberto knot. <laughs> All right, so you're done. I'm done. Uh, last, last but not least, and I can't believe Brian didn't have this on his, well, see, on this, his top five. The bait mask we'll show you next used to be one of my go-to baits. But I've kind of put it on the backside of the burner now because it just, I don't know, I don't feel like it, I feel like I fish over a lot of fish with it. But it will, it is a good fall. It bait. still wins tournaments. Yes, it, it does. It still wins them around here, but it is a good old hand tied. This is actually a shooter. This is a shooter jig. This is the blue oyster color, um, and this is a half ounce, and it's a it's as good a dock jig as you'll ever find anywhere on the planet. Uh, this jig right here has probably, when Brian and Andy and I can I can name twenty five yeah. guys around here that's won just noodles and noodles of money on a jig like this. And the reason it's one of my top five go to fall fishing baits is is two reasons. We fish a lot of lakes around I'm here. Some that huh? Go ahead. Well, why, 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 you, why, yeah, why <laughs> did you say something? You know, somebody just requested to go live. I've never done that, so I'm got to check it out. I thought, <laughs> I was what you were doing. I thought you were live. You I asked to do do join. Our tech guy is not so techy. I've never joined on Instagram. He's, oh, you okay. made me come alive with a live question. I, we get her to have a live question on Instagram. Wait, do I hear somebody in the back? This is too, too much going on. Oh, okay. Too much going on. He's got somebody live. Hey, mute, uh, mute your right. volume in the back and we'll get a question. Hey, yeah. Trevor Fitzgerald, the owner of Fitzgerald Rods, just messaged me and said he can tie the FG knot. He can tie the FG I've heard of it, but I, I don't even see the I don't know if I believe him. Yeah. But, um, he right, says so he can. Back to the I don't see it to believe him. The half ounce hand tied shooter jig is definitely always on my deck in the fall, anywhere I go, because I feel like if I find a bite on a bait like this, the potential to win is always there. Okay. So, um, Pretty simple as that. I mean, and yeah. this is a bluegill color. Um, it, completely different than the swim jig. Did the swim jig before. That's more shad, the shad deal related. This is more of a dock deal, a rock deal, things like that. Especially when it starts to get a little bit cooler, even later in the fall, that's when the jig might start shining a little bit more. Yeah. And it catches big bass. So there you have it. Our top 10, top five Tom. each. Fishing lures. Go to fall fishing lures. Then so we're gonna have on the day, regardless <laughs> of where we're at. All right, so we're jumping straight into questions now. We're, so. gonna, we're about to take a live question. Okay, we're a gonna take a live question. question. Where's it? Hey, going? Chris this is our first live volume question. down in the background. I can't hear no. There's too much going on. Yeah, this was Jeff's idea. If I'm anybody's hey, asking, somebody hit it. I'm gonna try it. Oh. Trevor just messaged me back and said I used the FG knot when me and him went offshore snapper fishing in Florida after I cast. I didn't tie it, he tied it, but it did hold good. All right, there you go. I did not break it. <laughs> All right, uh, Nick Phillips said he can't catch a fish on a jig to save my, to save his life. Uh, stay after it, Nick, it'll happen, I promise. <laughs> um, Trey Dodd said it's a good jig. Oh, Bo Adams, yeah, what's up, Bo? He said, what's the best broadhead, broadhead to hunt fall bass with? <laughs> Don't get me started Don't talking get him about started deer on deer hunting. Um, what's your you got a question, Chris? What are you talking to? Who are you talking to? What is it? Try it again. <laughs> I'm confused. Y'all send us some questions. I can't if you hear got you. any more questions for Paul fishing? You yeah, know, I, I got a bunch. Anything you want to touch on? Yeah, keep keep the questions rolling in because from here to the end of the show, what time is it? We got 20 minutes of question and answer time. 20 minutes of Q&A. <laughs> all right, so y'all notice we cut, we cut, we cut the couple commercials we had out, and all we're doing is, is uh, it's all about y'all now. So, yeah. Um, Brian Clary, do y'all think feathers help on topwater baits? I know Brian probably has uh, yeah. more in-depth answers on that. So let me let me let me throw that question over to Brian. I always use a feather on my topwater baits. The baits that. That I'm gonna that I have potential to leave sitting still, like a walking bait or a depop or something like that. Anything like that, prop bait, I'm gonna have a feather on it. You can see the Rambler; it's got a black feather on it, and I really so like the black a feather. Too. Yeah, the black feather is kind of a little secret deal. A lot of people don't talk about it. Gives you a little contrast in your bait. Everybody throws a white feather on your bait, so 
We're gonna try that sometime. Put a little black feather on the back of your bait. But baits that I'm winding, like the plopper and stuff like that, I do not put feathers on those. So you're not allowed to do that anymore. And I think the biggest deal with the walking bait and the deep hop is if you get a fish to come look at it, you can kind of cat and mouse him and kind of entice him to bite that feather. Like he may not blast it, but if he gets interested and he's up under the bait looking at it, you can pause it and that feather will stay under the water and kind of pulsate and Usually you can get them to commit to it. They might run up there and just nip that back feather and you'll hook them and catch them every time when they do that. So. TJ Eskew had an interesting question, talking about a jig. In, in, in our opinion, who's the greatest jig fisherman currently or previously? Um, that's kind of a loaded question because there's a lot of good jig fish. I'm gonna go with Denny Brower. I mean, yeah, Denny, he kind of paved the way for flipping jigs and stuff like that, but I'm going to have to go with Andy Morgan. That, that That's a strong argument with, there. I'm going to have to go with Morgan on flipping the jig, yeah. All right, um, does the drop shot rig work well in the fall? <laughs> Clarence Johnson asked that. Clarence, it, it can absolutely give it the right situation. When you get out there offshore, you're chasing schooling fish, especially when those schooling fish are kind of done for the morning or, or they start to get... Uh, a little bit fickle to catch. A lot of times you can find those fish on your electronics and you can pick off a few old drop shots. Um, they will. I mean, at, at Norman, they get brush piles really good in the fall. And, and on in September, you can still catch a lot of fish out of brush piles on a drop shot. Not necessarily the way to win, but you can definitely get bit doing it. Uh, and, and the Heron Lakes, you know, drop shot's always a big player in those Heron Lakes right. in the fall, too. Um, cane piles in the fall, Cody Smith asked, absolutely, 100%. Cane piles are or obviously very, very good in the fall. Um, yeah. Especially, especially on, on Aaron Lakes. Lakes. All right, um, two days in a row. <laughs> Jonathan Carter said, I'll teach you how to tie the FG knot. <laughs> you can how to catch seven <laughs> pounds of bass on Norman for two days in a row. Hey, that's the deal. I can show you how to catch seven pounds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that ain't a problem. That's yeah. seven, seven pounds, seven pounds is in the bag. <laughs> now catch a 10, <laughs> that's a whole different ball game. <laughs> um, I don't want to know to say hello. Dudley. <laughs> Dudley. Dudley, what's happening, Dudley? He uh, okay. Sh Shane Rock said, uh, "If a lake has pretty much no docks to fish a jig, where would you fish it? Deep ledges, etc. In the fall, I'm looking for uh, hardcover, whether it's uh, rock, riprap, yeah, lay down. A lot of natural rock could be bluff <clears throat> walls, and where those walls transition to like 45 degree banks, um, channel swings back in the creeks, um, <coughs> things like that. There's probably a natural cover in lakes that don't have docks to fish a jig on." Yeah. Uh, uh, here's a good question about go buzz baits, yep. and neither one of us had a buzz bait in the mix, but that is a great fall lure, and I'm going to have it on the deck 90% of the time in the fall also, but the question was, um, if you throw a buzz bait in the fall, do you, if, do you throw one with a head knocker, so a bait that clacks real loud or something like that? I don't do that. I've never been a fan of the loud clacker buzz baits, especially late in the year like that. And my thought process behind that is because people start throwing buzz baits around here in late March, and you're talking about September. So fish have seen an ungodly amount of buzz baits for the last six months. And the last thing you want to do is throw this big, obnoxious, loud, clacking buzz bait. Like, I want something that's going to be a little more natural, and I never throw a clacker. So. Uh, Mike Harris said he asked us if either of us would go into the BASS AOI institutes to observe. Um, I, I, mean, I I won't be there. That would be fun. It's deer season. I just won't be there. Simple as that. Like I've never been on Chitug. I think it'd be fun. That was the question we just had. What kind of weights can we expect from Chitug? Man, that's going to be tricky because that lake's got giants in it, but they're there at the, probably the toughest time. I mean, I, I think. Aren't they there in September? Late September? I have no idea. I don't know when it is. I just know where it is and I've never been there. I can't really offer any insight. So. I know there's giant spotted bass in it, like supposedly. It's got spots in it. Big ones, yeah. There you uh, go. It's got big spots. I think Ledbetter's question he was trying to ask live was, what about the frog? You already mentioned the frog. Uh, frog is a lot more niche in my opinion. So yeah. these are our five go-to baits. Now, there's a lot of baits that we still throw in the fall. Yeah, like uh, if I'm on a lake with grass in the fall, yeah, of course I'm going to have a frog on the deck. But right. Around here, we don't have that option, so no frogs. <laughs> uh, Bo Adams uh, said, do you guys throw an A-rig when you're not tour fishing? I do. Yeah, very little. I mean, and, I know a lot. And, and Brian, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian throws a lot more than I do. Uh, when I'm not fishing, I'm not fishing. So, 
I mean, I'm hunting. I'm fishing you know? year round. He's still I'm fishing. fishing. I'm throwing the air rig in the winter time. He does. He he, he yeah. is chucking. If that I'm in a tournament and if I'm fun fishing, I'm definitely throwing. If I'm in a tournament that will allow it, I'm throwing it then too because I mean it's fun. Oh, it right. used to be really fun. Now it's not quite as fun because I think they've got used to it like they have everything else. So yeah, you don't catch. You, it's not. Yeah. Like, it's not like the first year or two when it was out, or first three years. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, I, I see some guys answering that question about the best jig fisherman. I forgot about Hackney. Yeah, Hackney's pretty good. Hackney's jig. pretty Occasionally good. Occasionally he catches one. Huh? I tell you, he's pretty good with jigs. Is old Andy. Old Andy. Yeah, Andy Montgomery. He's going to have a jig on the day. Oh, Montgomery's a heck of a jig fisherman. Um, let's see. Best dock fisherman. I have to go with Montgomery, Shane. <clears throat> Shane, Shane asked who the best dock fisherman is. Yeah, it's, it, that's kind of a toss up. I got to go. Like, that's between Andy and Shane LaHue. Well, he's a good dog fish. Yeah, like if I had to pick one from each tour, I'm going Shane LaHue on the FLW tour, Andy on the Elite Series. Yeah, and, and all the Elite guys tell you that Andy's known for his, his yeah. dog fishing prowess. <clears throat> I like that word, didn't he? Mm hmm. Prowess. Here's the, here's, the, here you got, here's the good frog question. <coughs> good frog question? On a frog, would you, you know, go about targeting isolated grass mat? Would you take it around multiple times, or would you just punch through a couple times? Wait. Jeff, you're not allowed to translate people's questions because you don't punch frogs. Read it again. I think you. On a frog, would you go through? <laughs> no, when people keep commenting, it's <laughs> on my phone, dude. It's only halfway. <laughs> Jeff, you're not allowed to answer. Uh, As you go around questions. targeting at isolated grass mats, would you take multiple casts all the way around the mat or just a couple through the mat? Okay, what is go. the best hollow body frog? All right, <laughs> um, a lot of different frogs in the market. Um, a lot of different frogs. One thing that I, I will, I will, I have to brag on Lumberman because we we have added a skirted frog to our lineup, so we have covered all the bases with frogs. We've got a plopping style frog. We've got a kicking leg style frog called lumber frog. We've got a combat frog, which is three quarter ounce. It's heavier, a little bit heavier duty frog. We've got a skirted frog. I like the skirted compact versions personally myself. Um, for fishing the grass mats and the, the scum mats and things like that. Uh, Brian, you, you pretty much, you like the skirted stuff for the most Yeah, part. I threw the skirted leg frogs. I mean, I'll dabble with a little bit of all of them. I mean, Spro makes a good frog. Uh, pretty much all the frogs now are made pretty good. I think I think kind of Spro set the template when they came out with the Rojas frog, the bronze eye frog, whatever it is. And so all of them are pretty good now, but that's, yeah, I'll throw this pro mostly. I'd say 80% of the time. Yep, uh, Donnie Harper said he tuned in late. Thanks for tuning in, Donnie. <clears throat> he said, did you have a buzz bait in there? Um, we did not have a buzz bait in there. It, it definitely is on our deck in the fall, but um, we we did not have one in our lineup. Uh, does it have a head knocker, he asked. Um, I don't throw one with a clacker in the no. fall near as much as I would like pre-spawn when the fir first few big ones get up there shallow and they get ready and the water might be a little bit more stained up. I usually use something a little bit more subtle in the fall. Um, what about you, Brian? A little bit more subtle? Yeah, I mean, I talked, touched on that earlier. I never throw a clacker buzz bait. I just, I don't like them for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not a fan of them either. Yeah. Uh, Brian, like, Claire, I tend to wind my buzz bait a lot faster than most people, and it pretty much just sounds like one continuous clack, and I don't like that. Ask Dudley if he can tie <laughs> the FG knot. Oh, you're not live anymore. No, somebody called me and cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> you could have to figure that one out. Because um, Matt Matt said uh, the FG <clears throat> knot's impossible. <laughs> it is impossible. <laughs> Brian Clary said he had a hard time finding travel hooks with feathers. Um, where do y'all get them from? Tackle Warehouse has got a lot of options, Brian. Just go to tacklewarehouse.com. they got a ton of options in feather travel hooks. Um, and you can tie your own. There's a lot of guys around here that, that will tie them for yeah, you. Yeah, tie your um, own. If you want specific sizes and style hooks, you know, it's better just to get somebody to tie those feathers for you. Um, he, did just, he did just ask, how many strands do you prefer on your big skirts? Um, I like 22, doesn't it? <laughs> Depends on the rubber. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about square rubber, round rubber, um, regular, you know. Oh, three, oh, Dove's gone, so I have to do it. Yes, um, it's room. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What would be your go-to for fall smallmouth in the north? I'm going to go back to this bait right here and say a spinnerbait because... It is an absolute blast watching a big brown fish 
yeah, smoke some blast like the that. And they will eat a spinnerbait out of the boat in the fall, given the right, you know, it's got to be the right window there, like Brian and I were talking about how conditional it can be. But smallmouths don't discriminate a whole lot. If they're ready to eat, they don't eat. Yeah. You know? Um, That's right. Let's see. You see a question in there you want to hit, Brian? Um, let me see. Derek Westfall had a good question. He said, um, on a lake without much grass like Cumberland, is a swim jig still a player in the fall? Would it still be in your top five, Matt? If not, what replaces it? Absolutely, Derek. I really wasn't even talking about a swim jig shining. It shines in grass lakes, but I wasn't even talking about grass lakes. I mean, I fished it parallel and riprap. I fished yeah. it on bluff walls. I fished it underneath <clears throat> docks. I fished it in all kinds of different situations in the fall, in the backs of creeks, fishing around laydowns and wood and things like that. Um, 100% Derek, I'd still have it on my deck, especially on Lake Cumberland. You know, Lake Cumberland has a lot of wood. Yeah, a lot especially of, if the water's up and you've got some water in those bushes, in the trees, which is, I don't know if it'd be up in the fall, but it'd still be a good option, something to try. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it, it's something that's a little bit like we talked about earlier, outside the box, especially on lakes that don't have a lot of grass in it. So I think you'd be pleasantly surprised given the right situation on what that swim jig can produce in the fall. Yep. Um, Shane, right. Shane Dover asked, what about a balsa prop bait for top water in the fall? I don't like a prop bait in the fall because in Too the small. fall, I want to cover water. I want to move fast, so I tend to stay away from baits like that and throw faster moving baits like the Rambler and the Plopper. So, um, Let's see. Chris Hart said he has a lot of trouble staying hung up in the chunk rock on my local lakes with a jig bigger than a quarter ounce. Any tips on keeping the bait from wedging itself between the rocks? Or is downsizing my only option? You know, one thing you can do, head design has a lot to do with you getting hung up a lot. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Brian. That and, um, I don't know if it's, a lot of times it's the rate of fall on your jig too. Like if you're- Cause having, it lands in there and yeah, it wedges itself Yeah, it buries down and wedges in. So if you're throwing, you want to throw a bigger jig so you can cast it farther, Put a bigger trailer on it, use a bigger size fluorocarbon that's a bigger diameter. All that stuff's gonna slow the fall rate of that jig down and keep it from getting hung is bad too. Uh, Lee Eccles is on, what's up Lee? A uh, buddy of mine from college, he said, what's the name of the fish in the tank? You went to college? His name, I did go to college. I graduated <laughs> from college, believe it or not. It took hey, me five ask years, where, but so I it don't, it, It's where though, it don't count. NC State doesn't count? No. <laughs> You went to UNC Charlotte. That's like, there's Chapel Hill, and then there's UNC Greensboro, and there's UNC Asheville, and there's UNC Charlotte. I went to NC State. There's only one NC State. Did they have baby seals at NC State? Exactly. They have baby seals at NC State. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wilson is his name, Lee, and he got that <clears> because he came from my neighbor who was Mr. Wilson. It's fun. So, um, all right. If you guys, Justin Taylor said, if you guys know a buzz bait, with a horny toad on it, do you throw that through the fall or will you use one with a skirt instead? That's a really good question. That is a good question. And I'm kind of back and forth as far as fall fishing. In the fall, I tend to lean more toward a skirt because I can wind it faster and it doesn't ride up to the top and want to kind of lay over on its side quite as bad. But the, the only downfall to that is you can't throw it as far as you can with a toad style bait on it. So you definitely get more distance on your cast. You skip it better with the toad. So it's kind of either or. I, I think it's whatever you prefer actually. Like I don't think a fish is gonna let one go by him versus the other. Oh, Nick Phillips said Swindle can skip socks with anybody. Oh, I guess- I think he meant Skip docks. docks. <laughs> I think he meant docks. Yeah, I got you. Um, I like don't to see, ask questions anymore. I'd like to see it. <laughs> I read what socks. they said. You added words to it. I read what they asked. But the next you added words to it. was something puncher. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, that'd be cool. Have a swim on Montgomery Dock skipping showdown. We can do it. Have a little, have a little challenge there. <laughs> um, all right. Punching frogs, huh? Laugh out loud. <laughs> Shane Rock was laughing at you. Um, Depends on the size of the frog. <laughs> Yeah, if you put a four ounce weight in front of it, you could punch you could punch a frog in the mouth. Fish with bullfrogs. You might be you might Live be you might frogs. be on the Live side there. Frogs. Yeah. <laughs> James Wiley said he enjoys the show. Thanks a bunch, James. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, yeah. Um, jo uh, Joey Randall. Uh, Joey Randall keeps touching on. Uh, you see what he, Joey's talking about? He asking if MLF's going to own the world. Johnny Morris plus Boy Duckett. Here we go, boys. Yeah, all that's all that's YT. 
What was that? What we had to be determined? Y T B D. Yeah, that's what you're, I was getting. At. Yeah, there we go. So uh, yeah, we're gonna leave that subject alone because we don't know because we don't know anything yet. But um, <laughs> all right, Wiley in the fall. Top three baits on Wiley in the fall. I mean, I got three of mine right yeah, here. I got three. I'm gonna have a chatter bait and probably a plopper and a rambler. Probably them three. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna have a top water walking bait, a spinner bait, and jig. So um, top three for sure. Uh, this may be one of the best Instagram names I've seen in a while. What's that? Jerk Bass Lips. Jerk Bass Lips. I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> All right. Um, what time we got, Brian? We've got 7.56. So we've got our giveaway membership question coming up in a couple of minutes. And we had a special giveaway for tonight, but Matt took it out. I'm putting it back in. You just don't know it. Okay. Why are you just putting it back in? Because you did. Just you gotta, like you took back your you top water bait. <laughs> it's all Matt's fault. He's Indian Indian. giver. He's an Indian giver. Uh, you got to watch him. Ryan Love said NC State counts for my I, I got to answer this question from oh Brian. Gosh. He's asked, what's a must-have lure to tie on for September smallies on the Columbia River in the PNW? I guess that's Pacific Northwest. Good job. Got that. I don't know what your acronym was for, but I know this one. <laughs> I've never been to the Columbia River, but like Matt said earlier, with the kind of the eastern United States smallmouth, they love a spinnerbait in the fall. You can burn that spinnerbait, and smallmouth are up shallow or chasing. They they want something moving fast in the fall. It's kind of been my success with smallmouth, so I definitely try to stick with something you can work fast, be it a spinnerbait, a jerk bait, something like that. Yeah, you can burn a swim bait too, and they'll smoke yeah. that thing. And a crankbait. Small mouth do like crankbait. They do. But my wife posted a picture of a wolf. Where? I missed. Talking it. about NC State wolf pack. She graduated from there too. And so anybody that says NC State doesn't count will have to answer to her also. Um, David Williams said Emily counts. Matt don't care. Matt, <laughs> she graduated on time with honors. See, Matt so was she like counts. a year late. Matt don't uh, care. But the reason I graduated was because of my wife. So she she I, helped you. I had a little help there. Yeah, I had a lot of help there. Um, and then David Williams comes back and says, Mike, Matt, your wife said you better come feed the horses. Those are wolves, David. You need to get some glasses. <laughs> and he actually put the wolf emoji there, and still, oh, I God. still think he believes they're horses. Anyway. What, believes the wolves are horses or the horses are wolves? <laughs> I'm right, confused. All right, chasing rabbits. Let's go. Um, Tyler said, looks Brian, like... I don't know why Matt's stingy. Like, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I can't answer that question. Hey, I tell you what, Next on next week's show, we're giving away Brian's boat. Y'all ready? Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> why are you so stingy? We will give away my boat for a sum of money. A sum of money. <laughs> We're selling raffle tickets. Sixty grand a piece, guaranteed winner. Yeah. Right? <laughs> All right. We'll um, sell ten tickets. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll only sell ten tickets. That's a deal. That's not a guaranteed winner. Then the same person would have to buy all ten. You didn't say guaranteed to win what? You wow. just said it's a guaranteed winner. I could give a rod away. Wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Kenny Kenny said, are the co-owners coming back? 2019 tour uh no not supposed to <laughs> not that we're aware of no they're not um let's see yeah nick <laughs> that'd be cool he said winners flw and bass going to combine tournaments and stop shortchanging us fans from seeing the best go at it i don't have an answer to that question probably <laughs> probably never though you know to be honest with you i don't no. I don't, I don't foresee that happening not anytime soon anyway nick my boat does not have too many miles on it it's got just the right amount. Yep, 683 <laughs> hours and three months. No, I checked it the last <laughs> day at Watchtop. I had 172 hours, I think. 172 hours? Yes. 10 months old? I got it in March. It's six, seven months old. <laughs> March, April, May, June, July. It's six months old. He's got almost 200 hours on it. Well, I like to fish. Yeah, I, I agree. You, know, you like to ride. You ride more than you fish. Well, I he like likes to, to ride around and see what's out there. Um, Jimmy but Bonds, 170 hours is nothing on it. Accent Buzzbait is a good buzzbait. Accent does make a great buzzbait, as a matter of fact. Um, I'm not stingy. I'm not stingy. I, uh, anyway, I'm not stingy. I'm not arguing that. I'm not stingy. Dave, and to answer David's question about Matt being drunk, he said he's just got water in his cup tonight. Ice water. It's ice water. You want to look in Don't it. pour it on the table. It's clear. It's ice water. It's ice <laughs> or water. vodka. Could be vodka. No, I don't do white liquor. 
But Nate Brown ain't down. What? <laughs> Some things you just can't help. Is that bathroom? <laughs> That's one of them. He said, right he there. said what? <laughs> he said what? Um, I, right. um, <clears throat> I said when it comes to liquor, if it ain't brown, I ain't down. <laughs> so there you go. Um, Brian treats his boat well. I can attest. Yeah, you're right. He treats it yeah, like Doug a piece knows. Of, like a ninja Doug knows what's up. Crystal wine glass or something. But um, well, that's my. A good mechanic keeps his tools in good shape. Yeah. I do the same with my fishing equipment. All right, watery in the fall, Joey <clears> asked. <throat> watery in the fall. Spinner bait and a jig. What do you think, Brian? Is that better, Dudley? Yeah. Yeah, yeah spinner bait and a jig. Dudley back on? Mm hmm. Dudley, can you tie the FG knot? No, he can't tie no the FG knot. He Let us know. I think that's how he got that hook in his finger a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to tie the FG trying knot. Trying to tie the FG You hooked knot. yourself trying to tie the FG knot. All right. <laughs> uh, trivia question. <clears throat> and trivia remember, question. if you are an FLW Tour Pro and you are on this show as a viewer, you cannot answer cannot. the trivia question. And you have to answer the tri trivia question on the Facebook Live, not Instagram. Yeah, the yes. trivia question has to be answered. I can't watch two feeds. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turn one of them off. We would never ask Jeff to do that. Turn so, on Instagram. Gotta leave Instagram on. Oh, because all the people on Instagram who watch this. That's true. Yeah, yeah. everybody on Instagram. So we do a, a FLW Live. Uh, FLW Live. We do. We do a <laughs> FLW Live. coming back through again. We do, <laughs> we do an FLW trivia question. You sure that's water on, in your cup? Yes, it's 100% water in my cup. We do an FLW trivia question on at the end of every show. We give away a competitor membership package valued at over $55. And sometimes we throw a thing, a little extra here and there. But Matt know. takes it back. <laughs> Light and night. We might throw. A, and we're throwing a cruise in for two, five day, four night. <laughs> Matt tried to take it back. I wasn't Jeff gonna take it. it I wasn't gonna take it back. I was gonna use this to christen the new studio. He tried to take it back. But all right, so y'all see what we got? You see what we got? What's that say? Is that French? You went to college. Bon, it's, it's, what's, what's that, that say, bro? say from state? Well, how did you say, read bro? that what's graduating that from NC State? What's that? That's nothing. <laughs> bon Voyagi. <laughs> bon Voyagi. Is that like a karate move? Yeah. Bon Voyagi? Yeah. Like Mr. Miyagi. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There I is a cruise in the mix. For, you know what? Now I'm regretting this because my trivia question is too easy and you want to give away a cruise. <laughs> I mean, they're going to answer in like hey, two seconds. I want to make them work hey, for it. Somebody's going to win, no matter if it's hard boat. or easy. It's You're right. All right. So, you know what, it's Dudley and And he's probably got more hours on it than mine does. Dudley's this is this boat. Time that boat. Not. He ain't answered it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to send us a video of him tying it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. We'll post that on the Facebook page. Look at that. Cruise yeah. for two. I'm going to put it up here because Matt's going to try to take it away again. No, I'm not taking the cruise away, I promise. Um, all right, so it is time. It is 8 o'clock. Guys, we've got all the questions we can for the night. I know we didn't answer everybody's question. Be sure to get back on the show. Is there a well, show next? Next week. Should be. Yes, there's a show next Tuesday. We have a show next Tuesday. So we're going to keep count of how many. Huh? I say 10th or something. Yeah. Yeah. What? No, I'll it's leave not the next 10. day for Atlanta. It's no, not. It's not okay. Atlanta. So we are having a show Atlanta. next week or we're not? Yeah, yeah. i got to leave Wednesday. All right, show next week. Don't forget, we have these sweet Let's Talk Fish hats on sale at ltfgear.com. Even in <laughs> jackets, man, when I say that. Dove, Dove Hunter man. Safety Chartreuse. Dove Hunter Safety Chartreuse. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'll be wearing that Saturday. First of all, you don't have to wear orange in the Dove field. <laughs> it's not orange. It, it's chartreuse. <laughs> okay, you're Doves not, can't see chartreuse. That's NC State. I, that comes from... Where y'all going dove hunting? That's NC State colors. Where, yeah. where y'all going dove hunting? At Matt's house. Well, you're not wearing chartreuse in my dove yeah. field. They did <laughs> tests at NC State that doves can't see chartreuse. That, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway. I mean, isn't that it in NC Jeff, State? Tell like them what the hats are now. Letstalkfish.com. <laughs> or let's, ltfgear.org. So, dot org. <laughs> is that not right? What is it, a non-profit hat site? What is it, LTF.com? LTFgear.com? Yeah. Did you say dot dot .org? org? Why did I say that? Why did you yeah. say dot .org? Scratch that, LT LTFgear.com or yeah. Let's Talk Fish.com. You can purchase our hats. They are back in stock. 
Like, after <laughs> <laughs> Shane Dover said we dropped from 250 to 145 viewers after Matt insulted the hippie viewers. Ooh, <laughs> I think good Shane, job, man. I think Shane gave him a peace sign, though. He's like, later. Good <laughs> job, man. It's not a lot of hippie viewers. I don't, just don't feel like we have a lot of hippie viewers, do y'all? What's wrong with free do? I didn't say we did. Sounds I just like said you got a problem with it. <laughs> See, I talk about having a little controversy on our show, and Brian yells at me because he doesn't want me to get confrontational. And then when <laughs> I do, he still yells at me. Yeah. So I'm going to yell at you either way. Right. All right. <laughs> but uh, you give it back to me. So you yeah. yell at me all the time. Let's talk fish.com if you're asking Matt. Let's talk I agree, fish.com. Nick. Matt is yeah. drunk for sure. Uh, <laughs> that is definitely terrible. not water in the cup. All right. Where's your breathalyzer? You get me blown? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. It is now FLW trivia question time. For hey. a FLW what do we give away? giveaway. And? And a cruise that Matt tried to take away. I didn't try. No, I didn't yes. try. We're yeah. giving away a cruise. Everybody, we're giving away a cruise we're for two. We're giving away, but not because of Matt, because he tried to take it away. See, I remember that. Yo. Well, never mind. We're not taking one. Uh, Barry asked, what about the shirts? Are they back in stock? No, Jeff is slacking on his job, so no, they're not back in stock. Yeah. We got cruises, but we don't got shirts. So. And when are they going to be back in stock? Jeff, you want to answer his question? I'll know Friday. I'll be with him Friday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, we're, Barry, we're going to get some shirts. We're getting some new stuff made up. And, and our goal was to have all this stuff launched by 2019, but we hopefully we'll have some cool shirts in stock before the holidays. All right. That would be nice. Trivia question. Everybody ready? Jeff, you know the answer? Do you know the answer? You have to know the answer in order to... I don't even know the question. I have to yeah, know. I know the answer. Are you, you know sure? Eight, you know the number two and nine? I told you the age earlier. <laughs> you guessed. You didn't know. All right. That's a pretty good guess. All right, here we go. <laughs> Jeff determines the winner. Whatever he sees on his feed first, whoever he calls out is the winner. Ernie Wallace. Ernie's always guessing before we ask. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie's so, already won. If you, so, if, if, so you, if Jeff calls out a winner and somebody says I posted first, it doesn't matter. It's however it comes through on Jeff's device. I don't know what he's using. It's called an iPad, Brian. Well, he's got a phone in his hand, too. That's called an iPhone. Device, because I didn't device. know which one he was using. <laughs> On his eye device. My eye device. All right, here we go. Trivia question time. <laughs> I'm going to start kicking my shin under the table. You kicked me in the knee earlier. Did I? How old, yeah. how old was the youngest Forest Wood Cup champion, and who was it? How old was the youngest a Forest t- Wood Cup champion, and who was it? I need the name and the age. A two-part question. That's good for a cruise for two. Two parts. There you go. Perfect. All right. Roll on, fellas. Go with it. And How much are my hats if they go to let's talk fish dot? Bill McDonald's on. Bill, what's up, buddy? Yeah, we'll talk whatever y'all want to talk, man. We'll be here next Tuesday. Yeah. And we will talk whatever y'all want to talk. We talk new tournament trails, we'll talk whatever. Um What you got over, Jeff? You paying attention to the feed? Yeah, nothing yet. You don't have anything yet? All right, so... so um, I got it. Pros can't wait, win wait. Who, who, who do you have? No, uh, he doesn't count. Bill? Oh, oh, I can't say nothing. I'm the <laughs> <laughs> All right. <coughs> we'll explain something in a minute. Yeah, we'll explain close. something in a minute. That was close. <laughs> hey, that was close. You don't see this one? Right here? He's got the feed. Huh? Huh, that's weird. Everybody's close. You doing? Huh. The question wasn't even asked there. It's weird. You got one that didn't come through, dude. Jeff's feed determines no, you got, the winner. You got one that didn't come through. He really does. What? He's got one that didn't come through. Who was the first one you saw? I'll scroll back. I don't know. Was it this one? I don't have that one. Is that it right there? Jeff's calling yep, out the it. first that's one he sees. So, okay. it, was, so it, was it was the first one, right? Yeah. Yep. On okay. the iPad. All right. You can come through my phone, but it was okay. first on my yeah, iPad. Yeah, that, that was weird, dude, because it came through on everybody's well, that's device. That's why I said device. <laughs> so he exactly. Said, he now you're device. saying device. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. So announce the winner, Jeff. All right. Who's the winner, Jeff? We have a winner. Ryan Shario. Shario, I believe that's correct. Ryan 
send us a message on our Facebook page and we will shoot you a code for your FLW membership. But more importantly, Jeff, what do they have to do? Yeah, to Jeff will determine their tell you the deal. Jeff, shoot explain me your, that. Shoot me your phone number and I'll call you and we'll talk about how to do this. How to get on a boat. Yeah, so when you send us a message, Ryan, on our Facebook page, the Less Tall Fish Facebook page, uh, be sure to drop your phone number in there so Jeff can call you, give you the details of the cruise that you just won, and we'll uh, we'll shoot you back a message with the code to redeem at flwfishing.com for your competitor membership package. All right. Yes. And another thing, what Matt was talking about when we first started the question, pros cannot win. Oh yeah, sorry Bill. Bill McDonald, come Bill, on man. Bill McDonald answered the question, <laughs> and sorry Bill, that is a rule on our show. Um, I know you might not have been aware of it, don't get mad at us, but pros, FLW Tour pros are not allowed to win the trivia question um, at the end of the show. All right, so where are we at, Brian? Next Tuesday, what are we talking about next, next Tuesday? Tuesday? I don't know, we'll come up with a topic. All right, we'll... Y'all, uh, got, y'all go on our Facebook page to submit some topic ideas. You know, if there's something y'all want to talk about or want to hear us talk about, we may not know all the right answers, but we'll tell you our thoughts on it anyway. Oh, Matt did ask. Well, I didn't even say what the answer was. The answer was Jacob Wheeler, and he was 21 years old when he won the cup. Yeah. I saw a lot of people saying Wheeler at 19, but he was 19 when he won, I the believe it was the All-American. All American. Yes. Yeah, so when he actually won the cup, which was at Lake Lanier, he was 21 years old. That was a couple years later after he won the All-American. So the answer was... Jacob Wheeler, 21 years old. 21 Um, Wheeler. All right, so guys, uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. When we can't go fishing, we'll sit right here on Tuesdays and Let's talk fish. And talk fishing. So guys, we will see you. You got it right that time. You got it right that time. We'll see you all next Tuesday. Thanks again. Thank you, guys. We're out.